friend, I'm Danny Walker. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by sharing this episode with a friend or hitting that super thanks button. Today, we're going to talk all about what is it like in a pageant coaching session. And if you're not there yet, if you haven't even thought about that yet, I would really encourage you to check out my free pageant prep course that is listed in the description. But if you're curious about it, then stick around. So every pageant coach is different, especially because not every pageant coach is what you would call full service. When I say full service, I mean that there are some coaches like myself that will work with clients on every area of competition and beyond, regardless of your pageant system. So that means I do everything from helping a client select a talent song, writing their speeches, choreographing their stage routines and their poses, selecting their photogenic images, and and then of course, working with them one-on-one -on -one to develop their public speaking skills, their interview skills, and of course, their walk. Some coaches will cater to one specific area of expertise. Like maybe they're known for their interview training, or maybe they're known for their runway walk, and that's all they will work on with a contestant. I'm gonna give you an idea of what it's like to work with a coach like myself who offers a multitude of pageant prep. Of course, if you decide that you do want to book an appointment with me, I'm going to include links in the description below for that. After you book your appointment with me, for example, you'll be able to download a client intake form. You'll fill out that client intake form to the best of your ability, and then you'll email that back to me so we could talk about our schedules and figure out what works best for both of us. That intake form is so that I have your contact information, and then also so that I know a little bit more about you before we meet. Now, after I've learned a little bit about you from that intake form and we schedule your appointment and we actually meet, the first thing that I like to do, especially with new clients, is to open everything up to any of your initial questions. Every contestant is so different and so unique in their needs. There are some contestants and I will meet with them one time. All they want to do is go over a, a couple of fine points to fine tune their performances and they are ready to go. And then they feel confident enough with the skills that they already have to go and capture a title. And I have seen that happen many, many times. I also have other clients and they're brand new to pageantry. So they just have lots and lots of of questions in general about their pageant, about preparation, about things that maybe they've heard from other contestants. So that's why I always like to get those initial questions out of the way. I also encourage any of my new clients to take a little bit of time before we meet and write down any questions that they have so that they are ready to go and we can make the most of our time together. Now, after all of their initial questions are answered, if we haven't already talked about it yet, I like to formulate a list and find out what do they have already prepared and what do they need? Now, that might be in terms of wardrobe, that might be in terms of what they really feel like they need to practice. This is also usually the time where I will ask a contestant if they've competed in a pageant before, if they have any feedback from judges or if they're getting consistent feedback year after year from different judges or organizations. And if that's the case, then that's probably where we want to start. I want to work with the contestant and figure out, okay, like why are they getting that feedback all the time? And what are we going to do moving forward to tweak that so that they can improve their scores? Creating the distinction or the list between what you have already completed on your pageant checklist or your to-do list and then what you have to do still is really, really important. It's gonna help to keep you organized so that you're not running over the same thing over and over again. If it's already done, we need to push that off to the side and we need to focus on the things that you actually need, the things that are actually going to move the lever and like push things in the direction that you need them to go in so that you can achieve whatever goal that you have in pageantry. Personally, I think it's so important to clearly define what have you already done, have, and completed, and what do we need? And you will be surprised how many times when we actually sit down and figure out what do you have and what you need, that contestants realize, wait, I'm missing quite a few things that I didn't even think of because I haven't done this exercise before. So that's really, really important for the contestant and then also for me so that I have a better idea of like where I can help lead you to prepare you for your competition. 
As I mentioned earlier, there are some coaches that have specialties. And one of the things that I've become very known for is personal branding. And I really, really believe in branding because you're gonna use it for interview. You could use it for paperwork, for judges bios, for press and media interviews, during an onstage question, and of course, across your social media. Frankly, if you don't have a personal brand, you don't know what your message is, many of your answers are not going to be authentic because you haven't asked yourself the right questions. You don't really know you. And if you don't know you, then how are you going to allow the judges to get to know you in a really deep way in a really authentic way. So that's why I emphasize these brands. And if a contestant is brand new to pageantry, she typically doesn't know much about branding, doesn't have a brand, or maybe she has a brand and she doesn't even realize that it's her brand. If a contestant has been competing in a pageant for a while, sometimes they change age divisions, sometimes they change pageant systems, and they need to retweak that brand and make sure it makes sense and it works for their age division and for their pageant system. So typically within our first appointment, we're gonna start working on that brand because you're going to use it in so many different places. And another really unique way that many contestants are using their personal brand now is through their wardrobe. So if you don't have that brand already, you're not gonna know how to communicate it on your paperwork for an onstage question in a speech and definitely not through your wardrobe. Aside from a brand, the other thing we have to address in that first appointment is figuring out what wardrobe do you have and what wardrobe do you need? This is essential, I encourage all of my regular clients and then also all of my new clients to get started on wardrobe right away. I do this day in and day out. I have had many experiences ordering pieces that didn't arrive, ordering pieces that came in the wrong size, the wrong color. I'm talking about custom made to order or things that are just coming you know, from your normal, average, everyday online clothing store. Whatever it is, ladies, get started on your wardrobe right away. And then also, depending on the type of wardrobe that you're looking for, there are going to be different timelines and every contestant has a different budget. So in that first appointment, we talk about what's your budget, what are your timelines, what are the deadlines for your pageant, do you have to go through wardrobe approvals? Some pageants require that. So there are lots of different things that concern wardrobe that I like to address from the get-go. Next, and especially if a contestant is of the age to wear makeup, we have to talk about hair and makeup first and foremost, especially if you're new to pageants and you have no experience doing your own hair and makeup. And even for my younger contestants that are not yet allowed to wear makeup at their pageants, we gotta talk about hair options. Can mom and or dad or a family member assist you with hair at a pageant? Or do you need outside help? And if so, we gotta talk about booking that ahead of time because the great hair and makeup artists, they do book up. So we have to talk about reserving them. We have to talk about budget. We have to talk about if hair and makeup artists are already booked and we have to figure out what will be the best use of your funds for the pageant. How much of that can we allot to that hair and makeup budget? Now for my contestants that can have hair and makeup, that's a different conversation. I definitely advocate for all contestants taking a hair and makeup lesson with a reputable hair and makeup artist in the pageant industry. This is different from bridal makeup. This is different from theatrical makeup. This is different from commercial makeup. And so a lot of times contestants think, oh, I know how to do my makeup. And they get to the pageant and they get their photos after the pageant. They didn't win. And then they look at themselves and go, why did that look so different in the dressing room? And that's because they, they don't have an understanding of pageant hair and makeup. And that is an essential skill. And I would encourage you to learn how to do that by yourself. Do not rely on a hair and makeup artist that you can book them at a pageant. While that may be an option, it's not something I suggest because things happen backstage. Sometimes they get overbooked. They don't have time to finish your hair and makeup. Sometimes you don't like the result of it and you want to change it, but you don't know how. So you'll end up spending a lot more money if you're booking hair and makeup for every single pageant than if you just make the initial investment of that hair and makeup artist in learning how to do your own. 
Now I know this all sounds like a lot and it is. And I do tell contestants for every one of our appointments, make sure that you can take notes, that you can film the notes, do whatever you need to do to make sure that you're getting the most out of this appointment. And I tell them that during the first appointment, I'm gonna throw a lot of information at you that I don't expect you to memorize right then and there. So that's why you wanna jot it down or film it. Those are your main options. And the other thing that I'll say is that after we've gotten all of that out of the way in our first appointment, that's when we really start getting to work. That's when we start focusing on building that personal brand or sometimes a contestant really needs help with her walk, for example, or maybe a speech delivery. And we'll get right to work with those things. Now, one thing that I will tell a lot of my new contestants, because sometimes I will get a contestant and they will wanna just sit with me one-on-one -on -one and they want to write a speech together. I would not suggest that. I would also not suggest using your one-on-one -on -one time with me to edit paperwork or to look over every piece of wardrobe or shop for all of your wardrobe together. That's not the best use of your time. If those are things that you're needing, it will be a lot more cost effective for you to just book a paperwork edit. Book wardrobe styling, book a speech from me, book any of those things separately, and then save your one-on-one -on -one time for asking me any questions that you have that you need to be answered, or to get that instant feedback from your speech presentation, from your evening gown walk, from your interview. That's how you should really be using that one-on-one -on -one time effectively. I hope that everything that I've shared in this episode has helped to lift that veil. If you've been wondering what is pageant coaching like, just keep in mind, of course, it's going to be different with every single coach and every single contestant is different. So none of my appointments look exactly the same because they're all tailored to each contestant and their needs. We're not going to spend the entire time working on their evening gown walk. If that's their highest scoring competition consistently, we would instead direct our attention over maybe to their interview because maybe their interview points need to be raised a little bit more for their next competition. Maybe that's what's been stopping them from moving on to a semi-final position. So it's really important to keep that in mind. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you have more questions about this or really anything pageant related, you can leave that in the comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe. You could also find me on Instagram at Danny Walker. You can follow me on TikTok at Danny Walker official. Aside from that, thank you for tuning into this episode. I hope that you're going to be back for a lot more. And don't forget to check out these other episodes that I linked right here that can help you prepare for your next pageant.